Hey, welcome back to my shop again. Today, I want to talk about cutting and gluing segments. And I know it's, there's a lot of variables in that. So, when we cut and glue segment, our ultimate goal is to get a ring as round as possible and with joints as tight and invisible as possible. Like this ring here, so all the joints are tight and hard to see. Now, how do we cut the segments? Well, there's many different ways to cut segments. There is no right or wrong way to cut segments, that's for sure. Now, how you cut the segments, first of all, of course, depends on what equipment's available. If you don't have a table saw, Obviously, you're not going to cut them with a table saw. But that being said, to cut segments depends a lot on what you want to do. If you want to make just one or two segment turnings and never make any more, then you want to use an easy setup, cut a few segments, be done with it. You don't want nothing permanent or semi-permanent. You just want to cut some segments and be done with it. If you want to make a bunch of segment turnings, but you only want to use just a few segments per ring, say 16 and 24, that's all you want, then you might want to try something like the wedgie sled. But if you want to turn all different number of segments per ring open and closed, then you want something that you can change all the time and come up with accurate angles. Now, like I said, if you just want to make 16 segments per ring all the time, for instance, what I would do is make a sled with a permanent fence. Make a sled, put a fence on it, make it semi-permanent, get the right angle, make it semi-permanent, Take some scrap stock of any kind of wood, cut segments, clamp them into a ring, dry clamp them. If they don't fit, then adjust the fence, cut more segments until you get them just right, and then fasten the fence down, screw it down, whatever, and you're ready to go. Now what I do is I got an adjustable fence on mine, and I got marks for all the angles that I use. Some of them I ain't marked yet, but when I do use them, I'll mark them. And I use a bunch of different angles. So, uh, let me move the camera and we'll go over and take a look at that. Okay, here's the sled I use to cut segments with. I don't know if you can see it good or not. These are probably in the way, these clamps. But it's got an adjustable fence. Of course, it's got a stop block. I fixed it to the regular fence on the table saw. But in order to adjust it, I have here a digital angle gauge. It's actually listed as a digital angle gauge and ruler. It's extremely accurate. And if I want a new angle, I just use this to set up a new angle. And once I cut and verify the angle, I'll put a mark here on the edge and then color code it and list it up here so I'll know where to go back to that same angle. Just a scratch mark and I can go back to it every time. And this cuts segments extremely accurate. And it's simple to build. I got a video on this channel just on making this sled. But anyway, that's one way to do it if you want to make a lot of different angles. Now, of course, to cut segments, what I would do is cut one, flip it over and cut the next one, all against the stop block, flip it over and cut the next one. Very simple. One. Two. Etc. 
until I get the required number. I do not want to do the half ring method. I want to do the single ring glue up method. I've got 16 segments cut. I'm going to glue them up. Single ring glue up, not the half ring method, which I prefer. So I got them dry clamped, no glue. I got them clamped tight. I look at them, all the joints look good. So, I hold them up to the light and look for any light between them. No light I can see between any joints. But my next test, I've got them clamped tight like I said. Push on the centers and they don't move. Push on the outside and they slide. Which means they're not really tight means they have to have a little bit more angle on them. So I'm going to remove one of them. I'm going to chalk it. I'm going to take my 16 segment push stick. I'm going to put a shim up here to get more angle. I'm going to sand it till the chalk's gone. First thing of course I got to do is loosen it up. Then I'll pull one segment out and I'll chalk it. Got it chalked. Now I'm going to sand it with a shim. Like I said, put the shim on the top to get more angle. Put it on the bottom, I get less angle. So I'm just going to sand it until the chalk's gone. Put it back in. Clamp it up again. Tight. Now, push on the inside, it's tight. Push on the outside, it's tight. So I can go ahead and glue up this ring and I'll get good tight joints on it. I'm not going to actually glue this ring up right now. If you want to see how I glue up rings, and uh, like I said, I got a video just on making segmented rings. And again, on my video on the sanding platform or sanding jig for the uh, this sander, I show how to adjust the angle on them. So, after you get them glued up, and glue them into a turning, then what you want to do is look at the turning and see if all of them are tight. And if one ain't tight, you'll be able to see it and tell. And of course, that's the difference between a good turning and a really great turning is having all the joints tight. At least that's my opinion. Now, to do a half ring glue up, you take your segments and glue them into pairs. Then you glue the pairs together into fours. You glue the fours together or sixes, whatever you need to get a half ring. You get two half rings. Again, like I said, I've got a video that shows doing this, too. Actually, two different ways. After you get two half rings, chalk the ends. Then use the disc sander. Like I said, if you don't have a disc sander, you can actually make one that works on your lathe re relatively simple. And then, like I said, you can make it any size that your lathe will take. If you've got a 16-inch lathe, you can make it 16 inches. Or if 
you got a 20 inch lathe, you can make it 20 inches or whatever size you want. Now what I'm going to do is sand both ends of these at the same time. Put them on here, one on each side. Of course this side's going to try and pick up so I'm going to have to hold it. Sand both at the same time and get them absolutely flat. So I'm going to go ahead and sand both of these up. Chalk's gone. Take the other half ring. Chalk's gone. Now, I can put these two half rings together and get good tight joints all around. Trouble is, with this method, if you sand them too much, you start to get an oval ring. So they got to be pretty close to start with. But, that's a perfectly usable way to make a ring. If you don't have a disc sander, you can make something like this. This is just a box to give a flat surface right at the center of the spindle. And you can sand them. And this, of course, is nothing but a face plate with a flat piece glued to it and sandpaper put on it, nothing more. Fact is, this is a homemade face plate here. It's got a nut on the back. Very easy to make. You can make it any size that your lathe can take. If you got a 20 inch lathe, you can make it 20 inch if you want. But that's an easy way to do it and sand the edges, and glue them together. Now I've got a video on this channel on just gluing up the basic segmented ring. So you're going to do a segmented turning. Let's say you want to do, let's see what I got here. I don't like that one. Let me get another one. Okay, let's say I want to do 24 segments per ring. You say, well, I don't know what angle to cut them at. I don't know what length to cut them at. Length, of course, is the distance here. This is called the width. This, of course, is the height. So the length, of course, varies by the diameter of the ring. So I don't know how to figure it. Well, nobody ever figures it. There's programs on the internet that will generate them for you. If not, I got cheat sheets for most of the common ones. In fact, is I got ones for cheat sheets for all the ones for the open segments that can be done with my index wheel I got. I do not go below 12. I don't like making eight segments per ring, nor do I like making 12 segments per ring. I will when I have to, but because of grain direction, I don't like it. So anyway, you got a cheat sheet, and you look up, and you want a ring of eight inches diameter, and it's gonna be 24 segments per ring, so each segment's got to be cut to 1.0532. So how do you do it? Just have to set the stop block to cut that. My solution is this. This is a digital gauge. This is from Harbor Freight. I've been using it for years. It's never failed me, and it's accurate. As simple as that. What I do, I'll set my stop block, and I'll take some scrap and cut some scrap and measure the scrap. Then I'll readjust the stop block every time and cut another piece of scrap and until I get it right. Usually it takes two cuts. That's all. And then that will give you the diameter of your ring. And if you do want a cheat sheet from me, all you have to do is email me. I'll leave my email address on here. And you can email me. And if you've got any questions, and uh, I'll try and answer, and I, I'll send you a cheat sheet if you ask for it. But I would appreciate if you would subscribe if you do. Okay, let's do a quick recap here. The way you cut segments will depend, well, of course, a lot on what tools are available to you. And then again, depends on 
how many segments you want to actually cut. And if you just want to do one size segment, say 16 per ring or 24 per ring, that's all you want to do. Then a fixed fence sled works great. If you want to do two or three different common sizes, maybe a wedgie sled might work good for you. I don't know. If you want to do a whole bunch of different ones, I can do 96, 72, 60, 48, 44, 36, 32, 30, 28, 24, 20, I can do a whole bunch of open segments and I can do any number of closed segments. I can do any number I want of closed segments. And that's because I've got this handy little tool and it sets my fence accurately, very accurate. Makes it no problem to do any number of segments per ring that I want. One of the last pieces I did was 20 segments per ring. I used 20 segments per ring because that pattern worked out best with 20 segments per ring. So again, whatever method you use, your end result you want is a very, very tight joint. If when you get done making your turning and you look at it, and you see a joint that's not tight, it'll stand out if there's one there, then you can know that everybody else will also see that joint. So, again, our end result is to be very tight joints. So, with that, I'm going to stop this video, and uh, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate everybody that subscribes. And like I said, I have videos on the sanding sled. I have a video on making segmented rings on this channel. And uh, please come back and see my next video. Thank you.